We meditate because we have a treasure, our mind, and we want to look after it well. And of course, with every treasure, you want to invest it. So invest it in conviction. Convinced to the Buddha's awakening and the meaning that that has for you right now, which is that true happiness is possible. It is possible to put an end to suffering. And you can do it through your own efforts by developing qualities you have in the mind already, to some extent, just learning how to develop them even further. Because that's what the word for meditation in Pali means, is to develop bhavana. Sometimes we hear that the practice is all about letting go, letting go. And to develop good things, there are a lot of things you do have to let go. But there are other things you have to work on. And if you have that fund of conviction, that gives you the strength you need to put out the effort to exert yourself before the results come. Because the results are going to come only as a result of the effort. And you can't wait and say, okay, I'll, I'll wait to see the results and then I'll decide whether I want to do this or not. The results don't come that way. But you think about what you would be like if you gave your well-being over to somebody you don't know. And you realize you're a lot safer if you're in charge of your well-being. So it's a good reason to follow the Buddha's example, to have conviction in what he had to say. And then based on that, other forms of investment come in as well. You want to invest your time, you want to invest your energy in areas that sh show promise, being virtuous, putting forth an effort, developing your own discernment, your mindfulness, your alertness. Invest your time and energy in these things. And you find that this treasure of the mind begins to show its real worth. The Buddha says it's, the mind is naturally luminous, but you look at a lot of people's minds they are not very luminous at all. It's because they're covered over with defilements. And as long as the defilements are covering your mind, it's not only the people outside can't see the luminosity of your mind, you can't see it either. The clarity of the mind, the, the power of the mind, is a potential that's there. It's because of that that we can develop it. So work on your conviction that this really is going to be worthwhile. As for the things you have to give up in order to do this, be willing to give them up, at least for the time being. When you test the Dharma, you really have to give it an honest test. You don't just go through the motions and say, well, I did meditation and it didn't do much for me. You see articles like that in the newspapers. I tried mindfulness and it didn't help. Well, to what extent did you actually practice it? If you really want to know the truth, you have to be true to the practice. And we have the example of the Buddha and the word of all the noble disciples, that the practice will give its results. There's so many things in the world right now that are uncertain. There's a lot that's unreliable. We've got the word of the noble disciples, people with no greed, aversion, and delusion, and who speak highly of our desire for true happiness. It's one of the reasons why we respect them. It's because they have us respect something inside ourselves that's really worthy of respect, which is that desire for true happiness. They say that it's a realistic desire and that we should give it a lot of our attention and not content ourselves with lesser things. The world outside wants us to contend on ourselves with lesser things, but that's because they want money out of us or our votes or support or whatever. But the Buddha doesn't want anything out of you aside from the fact that you practice. That right there should signal that this is something special.